Hey guys, it's Chris. Today we're going to look at the unsung hero of adventure bike travel. It's the waterproof duffel bag. Super affordable, cavernous, huge luggage capacity, easy on off. It's a great solution, especially if you're new to adventure bike travel and you're not really sure if it's worth it to buy luggage racks and hard panniers or whether you're going soft or hard luggage. If you're really still trying to figure it out, a duffel bag's a great way to go. But having said that, I've also ridden with a lot of guys who really love their duffel bags and would never live without them. So even experienced travelers find these very convenient. Generally speaking, you've got tons of space for low cost. It's easy to take them off the bike when you're not using them. And, but when you do need them, you can pack a ton of stuff with you. Today, I'm gonna to look at four options for you, two different styles, all of which are under $100. So if you're trying to keep a lid on your budget, this is a great way to go. And at the end of the video, I'll give you a couple tips on keeping your gear organized inside such a large storage piece of luggage. Hopefully this will save you a little bit of homework and point you in the right direction for what you might want to do this season with your adventure bike. All right, so let's dig in. First bag up that we're going to look at is the Adia. The Adia is a 60 liter bag. This style bag has a zipper across the top, fully waterproof, this is our second most expensive bag of the bunch. It, it's a very structured bag, so th meaning that unlike the roll top bags, which we're gonna look at here in a second, this keeps its shape quite nicely. So you can use every bit of space that's inside this bag. The zipper is waterproof, as I said, really super tough to open and close. It takes quite a bit of force, which you would imagine you'd want that to be the case so that it stays nice and dry, keeps your stuff safe, but you're gonna need to pull on that pretty hard. Some of the feature set, you'll notice there's an external pocket. It also has a waterproof zipper, makes it convenient to get at a couple of little items if you need to get there in a real hurry without uh, digging through all of your belongings. It's got carry handles, both on the sides as well as on the top. You've also got your standard carry handle on the top, but you've also got this interesting setup that where when we stand the bag up, it basically becomes a backpack because it's got these shoulder straps. And these of course are removable here. They all clip on so you can take them off if you decide you don't need those. For my purpose, we're riding the bike. We're not doing a lot of hoofing the bag with it on our shoulders. So I'm thinking these are straps that I'm gonna leave at home, but it is nice to have more options. In terms of how the bag fastens to the bike, there's some very long straps here that thread through these cams, which are not spring-loaded and they're not snaps, both of which I think would be better as far as options. The, this setup basically loops through this cam and it grabs the same cam on the other side, which means you've got one giant loop that goes around your rack, your frame. And so getting it tight is a little tougher than if you have a separate strap at each corner. Having said that, the straps are large, quite strong. Everything looks like it's really stitched in really well. There's a very large contact area here for fastening against all the D-rings and the cam. So this looks really well done. You'll also notice there's a air valve, which all, all of the bags that we're looking at here today seem to have exactly the same air valve. I don't see a difference in any of them. Because this has kind of a structured shape, the, the bottom of the bag is very flat. So it's it tends not to roll, so which is nice for packing. That's because you open the zipper and it just kind of holds its shape. This bag is 500D PVC. It comes in at a weight of 2.77 pounds. It's 26 inches wide and about 12 by 12. The material itself looks pretty durable. It feels pretty thick. Mind you, if you pay twice the price, which you certainly can, you're gonna get a thicker material, something a little more rubbery. The zipper makes it super convenient. And as compared to other bags in our lineup, it's a much tidier, neater look. So the idea it's sport, waterproof duffel bag is a nice way to go if you want that easy access and a clean, neat, structured looking bag. The next bag I'm gonna look at is the Osa Dry Pack. This is your traditional roll top dry bag coming in at 40 liters. This also comes in a bigger 60 liter, while the Idea bag only comes in that black and gray color that you saw. The Osa bag is available in a variety of different colors. It also comes in three different sizes. Here we're looking at a 40 liter bag, which weighs 2.33 pounds. It's about 24 inches long and about 12 by 12 in terms of height and depth. At 2.33 pounds, this is the lightest bag of the bunch. And as a result, it kind of looks like the material might be just a little bit thinner. It's probably pretty similar to the next bag that I'm gonna show you as far as thickness. A lot of creases in this bag that I didn't see in the last bag. All right, so let's take a look at the bag in terms of straps. We've got the grab handle at the top. It's got two straps to cinch down the top of the bag. And then we've got compression straps 
that fasten across the top and these just snap and we can snug them down to compress all of our luggage inside. We've got top rings as we did on the last bag. And then we've got what almost looks like rock straps in that these straps are stitched. So there's a loop. This loop allows us to do a slip knot through the frame, come back around and snap at the top here. That's a great feature. Makes it really easy to both tighten down all four corners independently, but also make it easy to remove this strap, move it to another bike. Really like that bit of a feature. Now what you notice is this contact patch where all of the fasteners are is really a lot shorter than the last bag we looked at. And in fact, the shortest, the smallest contact area of any of the four bags that we're looking at today. Also, it, generally speaking, these straps are a little thinner and a little smaller than all the other bags. Uh, there's reflective patches, both front and back, which helps for visibility. And because this comes in a variety of colors, you can decide to go with some, a bright color. But if you go with some of the darker colors, you're gonna find that those reflective patches are that much more important. It does have a spot for your ID. If you happen to want to keep any sort of information there, if you were to happen to leave a bag in a hotel room or something, I tend to keep that type of information tucked in the bag. Don't really want that out in public, but that's your choice on that. Um, they've included that as a feature. Outside of that, this bag has creases more than probably the, any of the others that we're looking at here today. But generally speaking, it feels thick enough and durable enough that it should more than do the job for a season or two as you figure out what luggage you want to run on your particular ADV bike. The next bag we're going to take a look at is the Rock Brothers bag. This bag is a 60 liter bag. You can notice that it is bigger than the others that we've looked at. The roll top bags tend to be bigger than the zipper top bags, just as a direct comparison when you're looking at the same number of liters. This is no different. As far as dimensions go, this is a 27 by 13 by about 12 or 13. So it is the biggest bag of the bunch, even though it only comes in at 2.64 pounds, which is a little lighter on based on a per liter basis uh, than any of the other bags. So theoretically, this, this is a the thinnest bag of the bunch. But what's interesting about it is the it has less creasing and it has more of a rubber feel to it and it's a little smoother. So it actually looks like it would survive better as far as cost per liter this is your least expensive way to go. It's a good looking bag. Let's just take a look at the straps. Here we've got a pretty good contact patch where all the straps are located. Um, we've got the carry handle, which is pretty standard. We've got a compression strap across the top, which snaps in place. Securing the bottom of the bag is a snap-on strap, which goes all the way across the bottom underneath the bag and snaps on on the other side. So this is just all one continuous strap. Like we saw in the first bag, so not my favorite in terms of, I'd really like to have four points that I can tighten down. This will be one all the way around. Um, but I do like the fact that it snaps on and off so that you can remove it quickly. As with all these bags, shoulder straps are included so you can carry it if you have to over your shoulder. This bag also, as the last one we saw, has a spot for your ID if you wish to use it. I would leave that to you to make that decision. Outside of that, there's reflective pieces on the front and the back. Again, you've got options for colors. As with each of these bags, we've got an air valve to allow us to compress the bag and then secure it. Um, once we've got it compressed, and that air valve looks pretty standard as compared to all of the other bags. So that's the Rock Brothers bag. Okay, last but certainly not least is the Tusk Dry Duffel. This one's the 44 liter version. There's a 33 liter as well. They're only off by a couple of dollars. I think it's $4 difference between the two bags. This is the heaviest bag on a per liter basis of the bunch. Comes in at a whopping 3.6 pounds. As compared to the others, which were all in the twos, this is definitely thicker. It's smoother to the touch. You can feel how thicker this material really is. So really gives me confidence that this bag is gonna last for several seasons. If we look at the straps, we've got the top straps pretty similar. That's pretty standard. We have a compression strap that clips um, on top of that bag. Now we've, we've got the top D-ring that all the other bags have. We've got an extra one there for whatever you might need to uh, secure to the front of the bag. And then we've got the D-ring at the bottom to allow us to secure it to the bike. The logo is reflective, so it gives you that reflectivity and it's got the air valve at the top which allows us to release the air as we get the bag cinched down to make it as small as possible. All right, included in the Tusk bag, straps to secure the bag to the frame. And this, much like the kind of rock strap setup, you've got a loop at one end so that you can slip knot it against any part of your frame. 
And then you've got the buckle and, and that you can secure to the straps up on top or any of these D-rings. Okay, if you're doing the math as I'm doing it, there's no buckles on the other side uh, to fasten these buckles to. We need something that'll connect to the bag. And so for that reason, I think the there's really two things you're gonna have to do, which is get yourself some buckles, which I was able to pick up at the local craft store. As long as they're one inch buckles, they will fit the strap that is included in the kit. And then the other piece is, in all cases, these buckles are gonna need to be affixed to the bag, to one of these D-rings. And so for that, we're gonna want either some strapping, which you can pick up. I got about two yards of uh, strapping here just for a few dollars. Um, you could do that, cut that into four pieces, strap that through, and then loop it through the buckle on this side. The other really quick fix, of course, most of us have cable ties lying around the shop. Two or three cable ties, I would think about three cable ties, and you can permanently connect the other half of the buckle to your bag. So buying a little extra strap is a better way to go than using zip ties or cable ties. But if you do use cable ties, make sure to leave a little bit of extra. Don't cut them too short because you don't want the sharp edge to dig into the bag and create wear and potentially cause a hole. So the orientation of these cable ties, a little extra material at the end keeps them from spinning. Also orienting them so they face up and forward will also ensure that they don't dig into the bag. Um, with a vibration, you could easily obviously get a hole if it's rubbing against the bag the whole time. So a little extra one inch strapping is obviously a better way to go than the cable ties, but in a pinch, you can certainly get away with cable ties. So that's really the fix for that. Kind of curious that they didn't include some kind of um, a way to fasten the other half of the buckle and also not sure why they didn't include four buckles in the kit, but nevertheless, a really easy fix. Not insurmountable, just a few bucks for the extra pieces to get you all set up. So you've got a way to take this bag on and off the bike really quick and still overall really a great bag. This one I would expect to be the most durable bag of the bunch. It's worth noting that there is no shoulder strap included with the bag. But there again, this is a purpose-built bag designed for the back of your bike. That pretty much wraps it for the four choices that we have here. If you're looking for a roll top bag, the Tusk bag is by far the best built bag of the bunch and it's within a few dollars of all the rest of these bags. Well under $100, certainly not in the realm of some of the branding bags that, that exceed $200 each. Uh, so I would say this is a great choice if you're not sure what you wanna do with the luggage on your bike or you just need that extra capacity that you wanna to add to say a set of sa soft saddle bags, you wanna run this on your top rack, it's a great choice. Having looked at the four different bags, the next option that I think is gonna to appeal to a lot of people is the zipper top bag. It's got nice structure. It's easy to get in and grab what you need out of the bag. Um, so I think that's a great second option if you're more inclined to go with something that's not roll top. In all cases, however, all four of these bags would do a really nice job for you, especially if it's you're still trying to figure out what you exactly need for adventure travel. And one more consideration as you're looking at a large duffel, which is very unstructured and, and in order to make the most of the space and make it easy to find what you're looking for when you stop and you need to get at your stuff, I'm gonna suggest small zippered bags. I use packing cubes like this one, smaller cubes for electronics. I also use uh, dry bags with, which have the roll top that keeps things separated so that you can find them when you have a large bag like that. I think one of the reasons why a lot of folks will use like a, a rackless setup is because there's lots of pockets. This is a nice way to go if you wanna utilize a very large bag and still have that separation and still be able to find what you're looking for in a quick pinch. All right, so that's it for our dry duffel bag comparison. If you've made it this far in the video, please hit that subscribe button. It'll help to get this information out in front of people just like you. Appreciate you stopping by. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.